Spring is springy, check your plants. Hey everyone, today we're talking about the early warning signs of pests. Spring is upon us and that means it is pest season. You're gonna see a lot of growth on your plants, but that also means all the metabolism of all life forms has increased. So we're gonna talk about the early warning signs of pests that you might not be seeing on your house plants. This is philodendron subhastatum. The, the subhastatum. This is philodendron subhastatum. It's a really beautiful multiple lobed leaf and it has red backing. And I've never really had a lot of issues with pests at all and definitely spider mites on my philodendron except for fuzzy leaf philodendrons. But I started to notice a little bit of yellowing on the outer parts of this leaf and a little bit of slower growth. So upon further inspection, I started to notice these little dots on the outside of the leaf. And if you look really closely, you can see the little dots and early warning signs of spider mites. On this leaf, it is very obvious to the trained eye. You can see it there in the center margin of the leaf. Webbing is always too late of a sign usually. You want to catch this early, but you know you want to come with the neem on the back side of the leaf. And while I'm spraying my neem, I'm just always spraying for gnats at the same time. This is BTI, I've talked about it a lot. It's organic and it takes care of fungus gnats at the larvae stage. So I combine these two together in the same spray bottle. And neem also takes care of the spider mites as well as the fungus gnats at the adult stage as well as mealybugs and just about every other bug. So I sprayed the bottom sides of the leaf and because it's non-toxic many times I'll hold the leaf and just make sure I'm like really spraying down the back side of it very very hard as well as the top side. As we talked about in the microscope video, mites are on the bottom side and the eggs are on the bottom side. So make sure you're hitting all of that and use very strong neem that contains azadiractin. I use the 3% version, that's the one I would suggest, but it can be very expensive, but it is organic and safe. Why we're making this video also in spring is because we actually found a couple mealybugs on some of our mother plant monsteras. Remember, mealies hide in the crevices of the leaves typically or at nodes, like where the leaf connects to the stem they'll hide in the small crevices and they just look like a little dot of cotton. But if you look at it really closely, it has a bunch of little eggs on them. They're totally creepy. I despise mealybugs. But when they're really young, you can spray them and kill them with neem. As they get older, they get more resilient. Same goes for scale. Young scale can typically be treated with neem, but when it becomes older, you're gonna wanna use a Q-tip with alcohol. For either of these scale or mealybugs, you're gonna wanna really individually remove each one with that Q-tip and remove it off of the plant. But for prevention, you're gonna wanna use that neem. Two things we use in here for pest prevention are the BTI for the gnats and the neem for just about every other bug. We also use sticky traps. Sticky traps are a great way to trap the flying insects in your greenhouse. The flying fungus gnats are going to be resilient to that BTI. So you're gonna wanna catch them and make sure they cannot reproduce. So keep an eye out for the yellowing edges of your leaves. Curling at the edges is also an indicator of a plant having some sort of pest and also slower stunted growth. And when I say look at your plants, I mean get within inches of the leaf. That's the only way I can really see with my naked eye the pests that are on the leaf. If I look at them from about a foot or two away, I cannot see what's on that leaf. And usually I need to check the bottom sides. Again, if this were attached to the plant, I make sure to spray the plant very directly and very tough to mechanically brush the bugs off, but also to prevent them from coming back. So it's possible that these bugs have been dormant and just living in the media and down lower on the stem and in the warmer months, they've come up onto the leaves. It's also possible that they come in through normal daily activities like on your shoes or your clothes. I know it's gross, but it's true. And also if you're bringing in new plants, now more than ever, it's really important to quarantine those plants and treat them immediately and keep them in a small area to make sure they don't have pests on them. And when I'm spraying, not only am I spraying the leaves, but I'm spraying the stem and down into those rocks. Again, this has the BTI on it. So for soil, and somewhat of LECA, it's going to establish that bacterial colony and fight off future gnats. And just like I said, they typically come in from new plants. Subhastatum is a new plant to me. It was from a friend, but it had spider mites. Thank you guys for watching this week's video. If you did enjoy it, please click the like button down below. It helps me out so much and tells me what type of content you like to watch. And if you wanna come back for more videos about plants, we're making two videos a week now. So click subscribe and we'll see you back here next week for another video. Thanks so much for watching, have a great day.